units. Okay, yesterday what we did, I explained how to set how to set up the iSCSI storage and stuff. Also, I told you, imagine you have three hosts and one host we have created software iSCSI adapter. Okay, let me go and create the same on other two <coughs> host. Add a software iSCSI adapter. Okay, and third host, add a software iSCSI adapter. Very simple. Got it, right? So you have three software iSCSI adapters. What I will do, I'll simply copy these. And put it on one notepad. Second, third, okay, <clears throat> I have three hosts and three, three hosts has got three unique, three unique IQN numbers, okay, that's fine. I need I need to configure these three IQN adapters in my lab in such a way so that this IQN adapter will start communicating with the external world how, how to set up that let's understand the first okay So let's understand this. Okay. I have one host. What I did, I have created one SCSI, iSCSI adapter, and it has got this unique number. What I did, I simply click on enable and I give this number. Right? So how it will start communicating with the box I have. I said in data center you'll have a box right separate rack and it will have the two controllers C1 and C2 and these are all disk shelves. All these are disk. Okay so in between, I said there must be a switches. Without a switch, there is no communication, right? 10 GB or 1 GB, whatever. Okay, 1 GB switch. Cables are connected to here like this. And you have how many cables that you have? 1 GB cables? How many 1 GB cables you have? Two. Two gone for management. Two gone for distributed switch. Distributed mm -hmm. switch used for port, port groups. And we should have another two free cables. Let's identify them first. Okay. Let's identify them first. Go to first host. Switches. There are two switches. If you look at 
distributed switch standard switch standard switch has two cables distributed switch has two cables but i'm 100 percent sure i have added six cables now if you look at this is really pathetic let's do one thing i will use a depreciated one HTML coding. Okay, go to first host configure networking physical adapters now we'll see all the six cables at least it is visible somehow see i can drag it i don't know why can't they get the config same kind of coding in the html so i have these two free can i use these two cables to send and receive storage so in short, in short, in this picture, this is these two cables. These two cables for login into host and manage it. And these two cables, customer data, customer will log in and uh, access their servers or send and receive data from outside world to their servers or those vms will send the data over those two cables okay now can i use these two cables to receive the storage and send the storage understood guys come on quick yes yes, yes. okay so but these two cables how these two will connect to iqn okay so there is a configuration part here which we need to perform so what kind of configuration that we will see i have to create a switch i have to create one more switch with two kernel ports two kernel ports okay this is more of a lab setup real time it's completely different so these two kernel ports will connect to IQN and this IQN will talk to the storage device and get the storage using these two kernel ports. If one kernel port goes bad, I still have a two. One cable goes bad, I still have a second. But you need to understand these two let me do like this. Switch one, switch two. Okay, so separate setup, separate setup, but these two controllers, I have a storage a LUN here. Okay, this LUN can be, can communicate via like this and can communicate via like this. Two parts. Okay, no, don't, you remember yesterday scenario, four parts, ideally. Right, you can recollect the second one like this. And like this. Now you will have four parts that I explained yesterday. Okay. So let me draw a thin line. Our major concentration area is this, but without this, we cannot do anything. But the setup, real time setup, something like this, I don't have the setup at my home. So I will also simulate this. It will take some time, but let's complete this configuration first. Then we'll do the second side configuration later on. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. Sir. 
Okay, so let's do that. I need two kernel ports. How to do that? Go to switches, add a switch. Okay, I need kernel adapter. Next, new switch, new switch, right? Active. I need two. Second one, I'll put unused. Unused. Remember. Okay. So, Viscosy one. In which VLAN we try to put? What is IP 30. for this? 30 is a 30 we are already using. Okay. We use same 30. Same 30 VLAN. Okay. Fine. But let's let's decide the IP ranges. I need six more IPs, right? So can I use more IPs? 192, 168, 30.151, 192, 168, 30.152. This is my first host. Second host, 192, 168, 30.153. Second host. Actual machine IPs are something different. What what are those IPs? 192, 168, 30.51. Yes. These are the IPs, right? Is V center right? P is V center 51, 52, 53, and Active Directory server has some other IP 54 or 55. I didn't remember, we'll see that later on. So, no, we are 55. in the same server, right? We're on the same server 55. Okay, 55. let's try to ping 192, 168, 50. 50 sorry, 30. It's not pinging. This means the 54 is free. The 55 is 55 is working. 53 is working. 52 is working. 51 is working. 50 is working. Okay. Now 151 is not working. So let's let's make it 151. How to do that? Ask a Z1 30, and I'll use something else. I don't, nothing to select I just just for my sake I'm just selecting 192 168 30.151 okay. now you see it started pinging okay so another kernel port is up and running what about 152 it's not pinging right so one, I need to create second kernel port on the same switch, switch one. So now this is communicating via second cable only. Third cable is not using. So let me add one more kernel port. This time I will use switch one only. I don't need to create a switch. I discuss it to VLAN 30. I don't require to give any of these things. Okay. 192, 168. 30.152 right finish this is also communicating via two cable that is not going to work so but ip is were pinging but i want to make some changes here edit edit teaming and failover to override i want to bring three up I want to bring two down, right? So this iSCSI port, this iSCSI IP uh, kernel port will communicate via this cable, and this iSCSI kernel port will communicate via this cable. Dedicated cables for two kernel ports. Understood? 
connected now now go to storage go to storage go to storage adapter go to storage adapter you will see iSCSI adapter and network port binding you'll see network port binding and you will see iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2 okay means this iq and adapter will communicate to the external world via via these two kernel ports that is what i did so far so they will act as a uh, same port right if we are binding them together yes they are binding they will communicate via those two cables okay if one goes down at least the second one should be up and running so that i will not just like i will not lose the connection as for i check High availability on the kernel port side one one kernel port or one cable one port or one switch is gone second one will help me to read the data yeah. that is only the reason there is no other reason this iq number can send data like this and can send data like this okay but for some reason if this cable is faulty no problem this is active so i'll send wire like this Any con any con yes, yes. Okay. So this configuration is on one host. I need to perform same configuration on second host and same configuration on third host. You getting my point? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let me go back, go to second host, switches, add a switch again and kernel port this time it is new switch here agree on the second host and i have two and three cables third cable we neck vm nick three vm nick three unused and again iscsi one vlan 30 and what is the ip 192 168 30.153 Agree? Same IP, right? Let me know if I'm doing something wrong. 153. Another kernel port. This time, same switch. I don't want to create a new switch. iSCSI 2. iSCSI 2. VLAN 30. One ninety two one sixty eight thirty dot one fifty four. Okay, but second iSCSI one is there, right? The second one is need a tweaking. Okay, tweaking. Bring that up. And the second, you have to bring that down. iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2. Properly configured. Go to storage adapter. Select the iSCSI adapter. Network port binding. Add SCSI 1, SCSI 2. Okay. That's it. Similar configuration on the third host, right? So if I add network port binding, add there is nothing because no kernel ports as of now. So let me create a kernel ports first. No switch. And one unused okay let's let's do it I'll, I'll put i'll put it on active and let's test to try and configure it thirty. it will not going to work but just want to show you the difference see it 
Add a switch. Switch one. Two. Twenty. Next. This is IP. Last one. One ninety two. One sixty eight. Thirty dot. One fifty six. Okay. Next. Finish. Kernel ports are there. Both are both both the kernel ports are using two two cables to send the data out. Fine. Now go back to storage adapter and sorry, go back to the storage adapter. Add network port binding. See, there's nothing. So it requires proper HA configuration. Proper HA means on the first thing go to team failover override this as unused done now go back to the storage adapter and see you will see only one only one which is having proper configuration right and the, again go back and the second one is communicating via these two that is not acceptable because the configuration is in such a way two unused now go back to the storage adapter Try to add, you will see second one. Got it? Done. This is how you will configure it. Now, this part is done. So, this side of configuration is most of the configuration is okay, kind of thing. Manlum, this configuration is done. So, what about this? From where you will get the storage boss? Picture wise, I need a, I need to have a separate rack. And controller one, controller two, this, that, and switches and all. This is this is what we need in the real time. So what I will do, I will simulate this into one Windows machine. What Windows machine? My Active Directory machine only. I will con I will configure my Active Directory machine, and I will assign storage to like this what is my active directory server ip 35 168 30.55 right okay so this is my active directory server let's see what it has does it has any additional storage no does it has any additional storage no additional storage, only C drive which is 40 GB. Now, what I will do to this server, I will give three different data uh, additional disk, three additional disk of 25 GB each or 20 GB each. 25 GB is too high, 20 GB each. Okay, so how to assign that? AD server Active Directory Okay, settings What you need? You need an additional hard drive okay. Standard hard disk New standard hard disk 20 GB only are required. Thin provisioning. Add one more standard hard drive, <clears throat> another 20 GB only. Thin provisioning. Okay. Another 
hard drive another 20 gb opening say three hard drives have a same go to active directory server and then disk management you will see 320 gb disk all three okay let's create three different drives okay e drive f drive g drive now we got three additional drives of 20 20 20 gb each these three drives, these three drives go to picture on Active Directory server. This Active Directory server, I want to convert this into iSCSI target server. I want to make this as iSCSI target server along with Active Directory functionality. How to do that? Let's see. Go to server. Left it left the dashboard completely. Yeah, so add roles and features. Go to add roles and features. Next, next, next. File and storage services expand. Okay, you'll see iSCSI target server is one of the functionality here. Select it. Next, install. You need to enable. <clears throat> iSCSI target server service or a role inside the machine. Then close, refresh. Storage services, you will see iSCSI is added here. Okay, perfect. So now what is the IP? What is the IP? 35 means this controller and controller 2 in real time has a common IP for iSCSI target services, which is 30.55. Imagine. So on each and every IQ number, you need to specify. Please talk to 30.55 because he, he is the one who is responsible to assign storage to you guys. That is what the meaning. Agree? So let me go to vCenter, vCenter, and go to ESXi host 1, storage adapter, storage adapter, targets, targets. Port binding not used, still not connected. Path status not used. Target add. So, what is the target IP? 192. Come on, quick. 192. 68. 30.55 is the target. Okay. It will communicate via 3260 is the port number for iSCSI. Okay, in real time, you need to allow firewall rules with. Oh, sorry, you need to allow firewall rules for port 3260 in order to access the storage. So just rescan. Okay, if you click rescan, you'll see here some rescan host one. Okay, completed. Now second host, go to second host and target add 192.68.30.55. Okay. Please scan everything. 
then second psxi cos 3 target add 192 168 30.55 Scan. And the scan is finished in all the three. If you go to port binding, still path is not connected. now okay okay yeah i yes. guess uh, there is some network glitch in between what i'm saying if you locate on the east csxi after you add the target and port binding you go to devices there is nothing still because we haven't configured any devices on the target server you getting my point So let's go ahead and do the target configuration. How to do that? How to do that? Go to target server. Go to target server 55 and local manager. You will see. File and storage services inside file and storage services. I have enabled iSCSI, right? So create an iSCSI virtual disk to start. Okay, create. I want to create an iSCSI device from E drive. This is the volume. Okay, from this volume, I want to create iSCSI device. So LUN 10. Lab environment, right? Next, how much space that you want to give? 15 GB. <clears throat> Select dynamically expanding so that you can increase later on. Next, to whom you are assigning the storage? Now tell me, <clears throat> guys, quickly. Existing target. To whom you will assign the target? Uh, sorry, uh, assign the storage. A host, MAC address, or uh, uh, IP address, or host name. IQN. IQN. Perfect. So if I say new ISCSI target, next. Okay. So all the targets, all the targets have a common name. Okay. What I will do, I'll give some common logical name PMware lab. Okay. This group contains. All production cluster IQNs for shared storage allocation from SAN via ISCSI Read it carefully. Fair enough. Go ahead. Go to next. Add target. You will see all the three IQ numbers. 
you will not see a host name you will not see ip you will not see mac address you will not see <clears throat> vlan id or a host name or a dns name anything you will only see iq and numbers select one iq and number okay select the second one okay select the third one okay means means you are allocating lun 10 okay logical unit number 10 of one volume or one block one block of 15 gb to three servers in the cluster okay i have a 64 host so you need to add all the 64 iq and seat if you have a 64 host you're getting my point yes sir if within the uh, cluster, for... within the cluster if how many how many hosts that cluster will support 64 right 64. all the 64 mm -hmm. hosts you have to give it here so that this lun 10 will be visible across all the 64 hosts as a shared device as or shared storage yeah tell me Vivek, you are asking something Hello. Yeah, you are asking something. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, uh, if uh, uh, we can assign this uh, particular IQ to different learns also, right? I'll create if we have two or Just three learns, then yeah, we can assign. Yeah, watch it. Learn. I will create two more, two more devices for your information. Okay, thank you. Too so fast. want to give a password if you want to give a password you can give a password for authentication i don't want to give anything now the disk is created and target is assigned and access is granted to the volume everything is done now but the problem is i gave this as a learn 10 so what is if you see logical unit number it will always start with zero so on the back end it is zero on the front end it is named named as a 10 it is hard to remember for the people who are doing the storage administration or else or else from your side on the vmware side if you check this check this you will also see the same number learn id will be displayed over there so it is hard for you to remember even you never know what is the number so <clears throat> let's make a standard 10 apply okay so on the front end, it is LUN 10. Minimize, sorry, go to V center, go to V center. Now simply rescan, simply rescan. You should see storage and the LUN ID is 10 of 15 GB. Of GB. Okay. On the second host, it is not visible at the moment. You again select the IQN simply rescan. See the same storage of LUN 10 of 15 GB is also showing on the second host. Third host select and rescan. It is also showing over there. See, learn ID is 10. So it is how you remember on the back end and the, on the front end. Fair enough. Any questions up to this? No. Okay. If you go to targets, now you see both sorry, port binding, both connections are active. On every on every host, if you go to other port binding, connections are active now. Because IQ is now connected with target disk. Okay, target. Now it is connected to the target and it also got the storage and it has two paths. Two paths. Two paths. One is active, another one is standby. Okay, now you are saying 
can i use the same uh, iq numbers to assign to a different uh, lun yes you can create 1024 luns or you can attach you can attach 1024 maximum number i forgot 256 or 1024 i'm sorry my bad but yeah you can check that number in maximums sheet okay you can assign multiple learns to a 6i host that means your iq and can read multiple devices at us at a time clear so how to do that let's see so one is one is done so second one from where you will create if you go to task on the right hand side top corner new iSCSI virtual disk now this time i will use f drive to create a volume what is the volume name now or learn 20. thank you okay. so right Next, again 15 GB. You, you don't need to separately create a target again. Already target is set. Existing target. Okay. Existing target. It has all the three. All the three members. Okay. Right? To the same group, I'll assign the new one. Means this one also visible to all three. Next. All the three IQ numbers. Who can access the second one? All the three. But first time uh, we need to add it manually, like whatever IQ for numbers the first we time, have to add For the first manually. time you have to create a logical boundary of number of IQNs. Once you created a boundary, you can assign and you can keep on assigning the new devices to the boundary so that on the front end, your lab labs ESXA host can access all the storage from the backend. That's it. For big infrastructure, it will be difficult, like but that is, that is how you manage it. Yeah, you have to imagine, right? I cannot build a big infrastructure in the lab. Again, if you look at if you look at again, learn twenty. It started again assigning zero. So make it as twenty. Then minimize. Sorry. Not minimize, minimize and this can once again you will see the second device the second device on the second host you have to rescan it once again second host you need to rescan once again got it on the third host to rescan Got it? See, all the, all, all the three hosts has got the same storage. So let's create one more. The last one. Three volumes, right? We created three volumes. We'll allocate three lens. Run 30. Okay. Prescription is something where you can understand. Okay. GB, same lab, J drive, let's say I forgot the numbering, leave it, it's okay, right? So why I'm coming out, minimize this and go to the center and rescan once again. See, you got the number with zero. It is hard to remember on the here you'll only see number on the back end that my number might be something different so it is basically hard for me to remember so be careful those numbers must be matched across again this can see the number will change okay changed right same thing with the Third host. You already rescanned. You already discovered. Copy this. 
can post storage adapter fine so it is discovered across all the three host now you got the raw storage what is next step guys come on quickly now you got the raw hard disk what you have to do hello hello speak out if you don't know tell me don't know you need to format the drives in a data store format what is the data store format vmfs5 or vmfs6 that is already explained right vmfs uh, vmfs6 whatever irrespective at least you got the raw device what you have to do in order to use the storage you need to format okay. it and use it yeah. okay so <clears throat> i'll go to host 1 i'll go to host 1 data stores data stores no data stores only local one is there which is 8 gb so new data store using vmfs that can format disk or lun i have the luns let me go to next i'll give lun 10 where i am creating this where i am formatting on top of efxi host 1 please remember okay lun 10 which one i need to select here now tell me device i need to select third one hmm? third one device then then this one right next vmfs5 or vmfs6 based on the virtual compatibility i'll select 6 because it's a new lab it will format everything it will format all the 15 gb into one one mb block size using one mb block size and place exclamation priority low okay if something is deleted it will reclaim the space back that we'll discuss later on fine okay so you see learn 10 is created here and formatted using vmfs6 and actually it is 15 gp after the overhead it got 14.75 capacity and once the formation is done you see 13.34 some other overhead is gone for reservation clear, yeah. clear? Yes. now where we created this where yes. we created on esxa host one host one on esxa host one i have a lun 10 and host one local storage of 7.75 gp so if you go to host 2 we have a local 2 also learn 10 but i haven't created learn 10 on the second host but i will automatically mount it because that's a shared storage right yeah it's yes. visible learn 10 is visible in all the three all, all host all the host how many hosts in real time 64 in all the 64 host learn 10 will be visible yes okay anyone can use lun 10 means host one use host one can use and deploy machine host two can use and deploy machine host three and three can use and deploy the machine in lun 10 same thing with lun 20 but lun 20 what i will do i'll create it on host 3 new storage next lun 20 lun 10 is gone from here because it is already formatted so i will take 20 which is raw device still so next finish okay it is formatted if you look at it will also populate in the other other systems in a, in, a, in a one or two seconds it will not take much time just refresh you will see 20 is populated 20 is populated let me create third one 
30 select run 30 finish 30 is created on host 2 let's see 30 is showing here go to first host it is still not mounted but just wait for a second automatically it will mount or just refresh it it will show you just refresh showing it is showing here on third host on the second host it is showing on the first host it should display why oh, it is not showing in pan something strange okay user devices there here it should show might be graphics problem or something there is some issue learning Let's see. It should give an error. Yeah. Let's see. Thirty. Let's go to storage. Thirty. I don't think so, some issue on the host one, but just a moment. <clears throat> Let me unmount. Mounting is still running. Let's wait for some time and see. Unmounted successfully. Finish. Wait. Come on. So let me create it on first host. Might be some I/O issue. That is the reason why it is not mounting. I'll create it on on first host it is there here awkward configuration This not showing here. Just a second, not consumed. It's consumed as a nine thirty. How come? Yes. Okay. 
<coughs> assign to all three. No restriction here. I might need to reboot the lab completely to get this rectified. That is only the option I can think of at the moment. Just deleted it. Let me create new data store. New data store. Next. sure why it is not picking up one last setup it, if, if it works well it's fine otherwise we'll see tomorrow this formatting let me make a post the host if it is up it should <coughs> up with all the three it is working here it is working here if it is not working let me let's see how it will come up with but this time host reboot will take a little longer than what you expect because the configuration is increased right Host, see it's still booting up. Server is rebooted. Okay, quick. Bad. Okay, server is rebooted. Go to vCenter. See? Now it has got all the three. Understood? It's a lab man. What I what I yes. what I can do. I cannot do much on this, right? So we need to do some tweakings. Now it is populated across all the three. Okay, this is how you will configure iSCSI storage from any SAN device to your VMware lab or to your VMware environment in the customer side. But the configuration little vary. In real time, it is much easier than what we did now. I can say. Okay. So our lab is more tricky than real time. Real time is very simple. Right. Any questions up to this? Any questions up to this? Anchal? Sorry. Vivek? Sunil? No, sir. 
Let me stop the recording here. I will catch up tomorrow.